Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. I hope you guys enjoy it. It is a live video. And the first thing I wanna say to all the fathers out there, Happy Father's Day, and I'm sorry for this morning's video where I busted out in a Father's Day rap, was it? But I want to show my children, you guys, it's okay to have fun and be lighthearted and be kooky. And I also wanted to show all of you that it's okay to embarrass yourself sometimes, okay? Just sometimes. But some of the stuff we're going to get in today, you guys, is basically we're going to take a look at how big real estate actually is. And then I want to point out a few things that agents are saying right now and kind of just pinpoint the reason why people are lying right now. And basically the reason people are lying right now is it makes financial sense for them to do so. It does not make financial sense for most people to tell the truth in real estate. And that's unfortunate. So again, What's more important, finances or morals and integrity? It is what it is, you guys. Pretty much anyone can become a realtor. That's why I'm always preaching to you guys. Find a great realtor. Don't settle on using just any realtor that you find. So that's going to be a little bit about what we go on today. I'm going to try to do some Q&As as well. Um, let, uh, hello, everyone. Just wanted to say hi, Kim. How are you? Michael and I are meeting, and I did, bring, I did already buy a tank top and some sunglasses. Okay, just for Michael when he comes out here. Uh, appreciate you, Jim. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Dwight, been here since the beginning. Absolutely bonkers, Dwight. You know that. Jason, you know I'm trying to get to you, man. I am so sorry, brother. Got my man Scrog here. Love you, Scrog. Super worried about all of you people. Appreciate you. Um, and let's see here. I think that uh, Sacred's there. Night Cree, look at Dooster, Elijah, everyone. Really appreciate you guys, all right? Now, uh, a couple of things I'm going to do today. I will have this time stamped. I want to do this kind of quickly, y'all. I didn't have time to edit a video out today, so I wanted to do this live video, talk about some pretty important stuff. Alicia, I see you. Thank you, guys. Manuel, uh, what is this about a tiger? Someone said tiger shark. What's that now? What's that manual? You caught my attention. T tiger shark? Eight foot tiger shark two was ago. So a couple days ago, you caught an eight foot tiger shark. Congratulations, man. Did you release it? Did Was it catch and release? Um, Dwight, there's my man, Johnny. Let's see what he's trolling today. The housing market is fine. It has never been better. Now it's the time to buy. Meanwhile, Johnny is on the sidelines. And instead of him throwing money in real estate, you want to know what Johnny's doing? Johnny, I'm just going to, you know what, Johnny? He already knows I'm going to mention him. Instead of Johnny buying right now, he's doing what is like similar that I'm doing and what Jeff is doing. And we're taking our money and we're putting it in high yield accounts, whether it's uh, treasury bills, high yield savings, things of that nature. So there's a ways to beat out the inflation, y'all. But I'm going to get started now uh, that we've done the hello. So I want to show you guys real quick. Let's take a look at the Federal Reserve. OK, so the Federal Reserve is in control. Right. And I'm basically have been saying ever since the bank bailout that the Federal Reserve appears, unfortunately, and it really showed me when the press, Jerome Powell's in the press conference, um, they're kicking the can down the road and they're propping up the housing market. So let's just go and take a look real quick, guys, before I really get started here. And let's see what the Federal Reserve is doing as far as quantitative easing. Okay, so remember, they were doing quantitative tightening, right? But after the bank bailouts, they did a quantitative easing, and then they started tightening again. So let's just see where they're at. Uh, with the tightening. And I'm going to use Fred economic data, y'all, to do that. Let me switch over here. I did that wrong. Yeah, that's okay, though. So let me put this up like this. All right. So take a look at this, guys. This is crazy. Okay. This just updated three days ago. This is the assets uh, that the Federal Reserve has. Okay. This is for Fred economic data, total assets. All right. Look at this. This is Mm. Like people like, oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Like me, you know what? I didn't know that they were going to do quantitative easing when they were doing quantitative tightening. This is freaking crazy. Look at this guy. So again, look at this is all quantitative tightening right here. Okay. They're not, uh, they're, they're, they're getting money out of the economy, right? They're burning money. So they're burning money, burning money. This is great. The housing market's doing well. We're rebounding. We're getting great. Like we have over four months of supply um, to start the year. So great things happening. And look at this bank bailout, $400 billion, quantitative easing, liquidity pumped back into the you know, financing sector. From there, it spreads to every sector. One of the giant sector being the housing market. Now look at this, guys. Here's what's really disappointing. So they're doing good. Okay, so here's a quantitative easing right back up to the levels of where we were in October of 2022. That's right. They took us back to October 
of 2022. You can clearly see that right here, but look at this guys. So then they're okay. You know, I'm like, all right, I believe them now. I believe them. They're doing good. And then look at this out of nowhere, the last two weeks, it appears that they have at least partially stopped quantitative tightening again. Okay. Now we know they stopped increasing the federal funds rate, but look at this from what, you know, this is from two weeks ago, from May 31st to the first week of July, y'all, it went up again. The balance went up again. Why isn't anyone talking about this? What happened to the quantitative tightening? They, in, they went back to a small form, I admit it's okay, but at least the balance went up. They went back up from the end of the month to June 7th. You guys can see that here. Not very much, but it still went up. And look at again, this, you know, from last week to this week, it's basically plateaued, okay? So, you know, in other words, here's what I'm trying to say, guys. When I first look at that, so there's two things that I'm thinking of. The first thing I'm thinking of is like, seriously, you guys, you're going to kick the can down the road. You're going to overinflate the housing market again. It's going to come crumbling down yet again. And there's a presidential election in 2024. And you're just doing this to, so that the current administration can get reelected. You're manipulating the numbers and you're hurting us as consumers. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Now, what I hope is really happening, <laughs> what I hope, what I hope is really happening. Uh, and the second thing I'm thinking is maybe they see, well, I know that they see, but maybe there's something going on that we don't know yet. Now we know that there is massive trouble in real estate you know, in commercial real estate and commercial real estate. It, it counts for a huge amount of the money in the system. So we know there's a potential black swans there, consumer credit cards, used car loans, or I'm sorry, used cars. Uh, we don't really have credit tightening. So, Maybe there's just some, you know, some things happening right now that we just don't know about and they see that incoming. And so obviously they're starting to reverse the quantity. You know, maybe that's why there it appears that they're reversing quantitative tightening. I don't know, but it is a possibility. One more thing, guys, take a look at this. Okay. I'm not going to do a full report on this, on this video. I'm going to do a separate one, but I do want to show you guys, take a look. All right. Uh, foreclosures. Okay, now I'm just gonna make a point that foreclosures are historically low. They have been historically low as far as percentage, but I also wanna point out over the last two months, uh, the foreclosures and uh, defaults or delinquencies have been going up substantially. And if you look here and Black Knight's not updated yet, should be updated next week. I'll do a report on that, but foreclosures are up 7%. And remember last month, I believe, if we're talking about defaults, they were up double digits. I, it was either 13 or 14%. So we've had back-to-back -back months of you know pretty sharp increases in foreclosure activity. It doesn't mean, you know, I'm not saying that we were at where we were at in 2009. So I'm not trying to play that narrative. But what I am trying to say is, you know, all of this propping up of the housing market is being done off of the backs of normal people, locals and housing markets, the, the people at the bottom, the, the normal consumers. So uh, it's, it's really, really depressing, you guys. There's just so much money right now, uh, and there always has been in the housing market. You just, where do you go for the truth? There's so much greed out there. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I feel for you guys is my point. And that's why I'm really trying to provide you guys with an additional perspective. And I'm going to tell you guys one thing that really drives me crazy about people, and we're going to listen to a video, okay? I'm going to go into a core logic here in a minute, and we're going to go over how big the house market is exactly. And then we're going to analyze Austin, Texas, and see what realtors are saying in Austin, Texas. And one thing that drives me crazy is when people say, oh, it's not crashing, but they don't define what is a crash, what is a what do you, what is a crash to you? I remember you guys. I asked a YouTuber. I'll, I won't use their name. I don't want people to get mad at me necessarily. But I asked them like, "Hey, do you think that home value is going down twenty percent? Would you consider that a crash?" And these people said, "No, twenty percent loss of equity is not a crash. It has to go down to pre-pandemic." So what I'm saying is, is there are still some professionals that are saying, unless house value crashes to forty percent, it's not a crash which means to them in their minds, a 35% drop in equity is not a crash to these people. This is crazy, you guys. I mean, it's all over the place. And you guys will see when I play a video, but let me start you guys now by going into the core logic real quick. I'm gonna do some timestamps. We're gonna go into core logic right now. Uh, and I'm gonna read this for you guys. And I'm really gonna try to 
take some Q and A at the end of this. It just depends how long it takes me to get through this. It's still Father's Day. I'm just taking a quick break. I absolutely love my children. And just a real quick, guys, I just want to say this last thing. It is such a blessing to be a father. I really hope all the fathers out there. I really hope you guys are having a good time. Our kids love us so much. So. Props to you, fathers. Props to mothers as well. Any single parents out there, I know how that is. Um, big props to y'all. Big props to y'all. Love your children. Y'all love your children. They're the most important thing. Anyways, so the name of this article is, and this again is Core Logic: Residential Real Estate, Largest U.S. Asset Class, but Not Biggest Economic Driver. All right, and I'm just going to speed through this, guys. And again, I'm going to try to take some questions. Sounds like, well, I think I got a, you're flip-flopping. Oh, okay. I thought Paul, okay. No, I'm not flip-flopping Paul. So I only put this up because I thought you were talking about my audio. So Paul, here's the thing. What am I flip-flopping on? Uh, what I'm doing is what I'm saying is, is I, what I was wrong about is how much the housing market was propped up again from the $400 billion. But what I'm saying is, is the longer that we wait for a reset, the worse it's going to be. Why is it going to be worse? Because more and more homeowners that are buying are putting themselves into a box where they're chained to their house with high mortgage rates, high payments, and virtually zero equity growth for probably years to come. So, sir, no, I'm not flip-flopping. What I'm doing is, is I'm adjusting my opinion with the data as you guys should do as well. And again, you guys, the thing is, it's hard. There's just so much of our economy depends on the housing market. So all of this propping up is just, again, it's kicking the can down the road, but not for a second do I think that we are out of deflationary patterns, okay? So we won't say crash. I don't want to say crash. I don't want people to get triggered. We're just going to say either negative equity growth or deflation. So I, I'm pretty convinced that deflation is not anywhere close to being over. So I'm sorry, Pod, I didn't mean to ramble on about that. I thought you were talking about my audio. You guys know my audio is important to me. Anyways, the total value of U.S. residential real estate outpaces, this is crazy, it outpaces the Standard & Poor's 500 and all publicly listed companies. Oh my gosh, this is why everyone lies. Everyone lies in real estate, y'all. There's so much money. People know that if they just tell a little white lie, that they can make tens of thousands of dollars. It's just a little white lie. They could probably pray at night, get it forgiven, but they still make those tens of thousands of dollars for that little white lie. I see it all the time. The market cap of the Standard & Poor's 500 sits at $36.7 trillion. The total value of all U.S. public companies is $40 trillion. The U.S. residential real estate market, on the other hand, is worth, you guys, $43.5 trillion, exceeding the value of all U.S. public companies companies. Think about that for a second here. Real estate is so important. And you want to know who else it's important to? Not these greedy people. Real estate is important to you and to the consumer and to the natives that grow up in places, the people at the bottom, the people that are renting right now, the people that are done with college, moving out of home. Real estate's really, really important to them as well. And you want to know, again, unaffordability. Unaffordability is keeping so many, forcing so many people on the sidelines. I, you know, I know that there's people losing hope and it makes me very, very sad because the, one of the hardest things in real estate when you don't have good credit or enough income is not giving up. Okay. So if you have the credit, the income and the assets, know the hard work is done. Just maintain those three things and your time will come. And that's what I'm trying to say to you guys. The total value of housing wealth can be measured by adding together the values of individual properties according to CoreLogic. Core Logic's total home value solution. So you guys see that Core Logic has its own value equating system, as does Zillow, because obviously median sales price is kind of a crappy way to keep our eyes on the housing market. Uh, and also Case Shiller is a good one as well. Case Shiller is super good. But it's worth noting that not all residential real estate types are equal, as most of the wealth lies in detached. These are our stuff, detached single family homes. So again, D, the American dream. White picket fence, backyard, detached, single family home. Huge profit. Almost all of the value is in the SFR, or SFH, whatever you prefer, detached houses. So that's why you guys saw so many investors, open door, um, invitation homes, uh, Blackstone, BlackRock, buy SFRs like that. So it kind of sucks, actually. They should, you know, it would have been better if they stayed in commercial 
residential, right? Like apartments, maybe even condos and townhouses, but not SFRs. SFRs are ours. Um, anyways, let's see here. So I'm going to show you guys. Um, here's the disparity right here. This is a, this is an interesting figure. It's, it's, you know, again, you guys already know this. This isn't, this is in billions. So single family detached again, $37 trillion, whereas condos account for, what is this about 4 trillion? I think so. That's about 4 trillion. And then single family attached is single family attached is kind of like a townhouse, right? Um, or a PUD. And that's at even lower than that. It's probably at two bill, two trillion dollars. You can't even fathom that amount of money. But look at again, all of the value is right here. And one thing that should make y'all like pretty upset, and also makes me upset, the speculation in the U.S. is out of control. And speculation, you guys, basically means that people are buying real estate. Say some ultra rich people are buying real estate. They purchase the real estate for all cash, and they don't do anything with it except hold it. Do y'all hear me? They don't even rent it out. They rent, they don't rent it out. They don't live there. They buy and they hold and they speculate. We have a massive problem right with that right now. In fact, I believe the last reading was, I think we have 17 million homes right now that are vacant. And of which I believe it was six or 7 million are year round vacancies, which means there are millions and millions of homes right now that are sitting empty and that are owned by people that are doing nothing with it. They're literally wasting. Oh my God, I hit my audio. Hopefully I didn't mess any of my audio up. I was just talking about how much like my audio is important to me. I just hit my mic. I was getting a little bit passionate with my hands. I'm going to take that as a sign to move on. Okay. So take a look at this guys. Um, total value of us residential real estate. This is 2013 to 2023 BlackRock. Jeez, what was I? Why could I not say BlackRock? Yes, BlackRock. I was getting messed up with Blackstone. Just blew my... Are you serious? Are you serious, Elijah? I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to blow your ears out. I'm sorry about that. I, I really apologize. Elijah, I definitely... Man, forgive me, brother. I appreciate your support. Did not mean to do that. But take a look at this, guys. This is going back to 2013. This is talking about the value. You can see this massive run-up. Again, 2020. Everyone knows by now. Massive run-up. So <laughs> what's the point of fundamentals if the, if the market's not going to follow them? right? And the government's just going to bail out and prop things up. What's the point? The point is this. So we don't go in depression. <laughs> so we don't have stagflation, right? I'm just saying, but we broke fundamentals and it is what it is. But I also wanted to point out, look at the loss of equity. So as the last report I read from CoreLogic, which basically represents right here, the peak right here, y'all, to this bottom right here is a loss of $108 billion, a <laughs> hundred. And I did that in my last live, I believe $108 billion loss in equity. And that hurts uh, anyone that needs to refinance that barely has any equity. So uh, this just goes over the turnover, not too important y'all, not too important. So really what I want to do now is my point is, is real estate is huge. And also um, shelter and, or the housing market accounts for 40% of core CPI shelter accounts for 10% of CPI and the housing market accounts for 19% of GDP. It is a huge, huge industry. There's a ton of money to make it. That's why you see so many people trying to get into real estate. And again, you guys, that's also a curse. Okay, so it's a blessing for people that wanna do something and make money, but the curse is a lot of those people don't understand how financially biased they become. For example, that video that I did talking about the um, lawsuit with the National Association of Realtors and how realtors make too much money, y'all, I, I hurt so many people's feelings, y'all. I got so many phone calls over that video. And I even heard this one comment. Some realtor said, I'm taking money out of their pocket because I did that video. They said, I'm taking money out of their pocket by saying that consumers should negotiate with realtors, which is the problem with the industry, because I'll argue you don't got nothing in your pocket until it's closed. And the fact that you think that I'm taking money out of your pocket, are you? <laughs> whoa, right? So, and, and you guys go to the comment section on that video. Look at all of the hypersensitive comments instead of realtors saying, you know what, Travis, I agree with you. I'm a realtor and I would help my client get the deal of their dreams if it meant I only had to waive my commission half. Not what do we get two comments like that? 
Y'all, the industry in real estate is broken in more ways than you can understand. And I believe, again, what we see playing out right here is a total restructuring. We had a total restructuring last time as it pertained to loans, right? Uh, Dodd-Frank Wall, Re Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. This time around, I think that we're going to have a total restructure as far as like the realtor uh, process. And we already have laws against the National Association of Realtors and many big broker uh, institutions as well. And honestly, uh, and I'm not talking about the great realtors here, okay? The great, I'm not talking about the great realtors. I'm talking about all the other ones, the other 90%. It needs to change. So huge, huge, huge stuff. But let me, let's talk now. Okay. Cause I, I, I rarely talk only about Austin. The reason I only, I rarely talk about Austin, even though it's my neighbor, I have a right to report on Austin because it's only four hours from my house, about actually three and a half hours from my house, three hours with no traffic. Now I don't typically talk about Austin because it's so on the other side of the spectrum, right? It's the leading metro area with price crash. So I could stay with that narrative. Oh, it's still crashing. You're crazy. But, we, but again, I'm trying to look at the entire picture because Austin is crashing for different reasons. But nevertheless, even though Austin, even Phoenix, Las Vegas, all over the place, but even though Austin is leading in price decline and inventory growth, there are still realtors lying their butts off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a video from a board member at the, I think it was the Austin Association of Realtors. And I want you guys to listen to what she is telling people just like you about the Austin housing market. And we're going to look And after the video, we're going to look at some stats to see if she's right about the Austin housing market, which she's not. And she's the, she's the board member. So if the fraud I don't know if she's a fraud, but if the greed starts from the top, it's going to trickle down. If it starts from the bottom, it, it's not going to go uphill very well. But if it starts from the top, it's that's why it's so important that these officials and the people that we're voting for are honest, good people. Because if they're not, we're dead in the water a little bit, okay? But first, before I take you into that video, I want you guys to take a look at this. This is a pretty cool article from Fortune, and I'm going to show you... Austin is compared to the nation by looking at Case Shiller. Remember, Case Shiller is a value um, algorithm for home values, okay? So we're going to look at what's going on in Austin. But first, here's the Texas map. You guys can see the dark red is like bleeding price decline. You guys can see some places in Texas. Oh, my gosh. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? 21%, 21 percent, 21 percent down in 78349. Twenty. I didn't even know about the 21%. Where is that? I got to do some more research. I didn't expect to see that 21. Look at 17% here. It's making Austin look like baby. There are places that are crashing worse than Austin. It's just no one knows of them. But Austin is, Austin, a lot of people know. But anyways, let me show you this, okay? Let me go back to the case Schiller. So let's go down here to the, okay. So this is the Zillow uh, home value index. Um, I didn't want to see the Zillow. I wanted to show you guys Case Schiller, but let's use Zillow. So here's the Zillow. You guys know that price declines happen. Uh, this is a monthly Case Schiller percentage, okay, in chart form. Okay, so according to Zillow, price prices started crashing in June of 2027. So personally, I don't use Zillow. I think Zillow is complete nonsense. I'll use Case Schiller. But I won't use Zillow. Unfortunately, this is only Zillow. But what I wanted to basically show you is the national average home values have actually been increasing since March. You see? So here's March right here. Okay. March of 2023. So that means we've had one March, March, April, <laughs> May, June. So we've had only three months of price improvement. And all of a sudden, we've hit the bottom. All of a sudden, we've missed our opportunity. All of a sudden, we must buy. When we followed seven months of decline, do y'all see how quick people are to hop on that narrative of, oh, no more caution. Let's just be hyper uh, motivated. But look at this, guys. Look at Austin. Okay. Now, Austin's also using Zillow. I hate that, but it is what it is. And I just want to point out, Austin never rebounded. Do y'all see this? And look at this. Okay, so Austin back in the great uh, financial collapse, Austin didn't even have property decline, y'all, because Austin has traditionally been so stable. So they didn't even have decline until June 
of, what was it 2008? Of 2008. You all hear what I'm saying? So, so again, the great financial collapse, Austin almost made it out of it unscratched. You all hear? You're tracking with me. Fast forward to today. Austin is being gutted right before our eyes. Why? That's the question. And look, it still hasn't rebounded. So even though the nation, the nation has rebounded, according to Zillow, again, the seasonality was not enough. The seasonality was not enough to lift Austin out of negative price decline. Pretty crazy if you think about it. Now, uh, the, the rest of the nation, yes, uh, for the most part it did, but not Austin. But again, why did Austin not crash last time? And why is Austin leading price? I'm talking about prices crash this time. Now, from my research, you guys, and I'm going to play this video here in a minute. And, and, and not everyone caught my Texas video, but from my research, the reason why Austin is crashing this time as compared to last time, the number one primary reason was the massive equity run up. Equity run up in Austin was almost 60%. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that out loud in two and a half years. So the, again, number one reason why I believe this time it's crashing and last time it wasn't equity run up of roughly 60% in two and a half years topped with Austin has becoming is basically become, I was almost going to say as unaffordable as California, but that's not true, but as unaffordable as Florida. And the reason that's such a big deal is, is Texas is known for being affordable. So when you take an affordable state and you add one of the most unaffordable cities to it, it's probably going to have an additional pressure downward on prices. But again, two reasons primary reasons, price decline. One, equity run up. Number two, the unaffordability is so bad in Austin right now. And also it was a pretty heavily, some of the job market was dependent on tech jobs. Even though the unemployment rate y'all is only 3% in Austin. Do y'all know that? Do y'all know that? The unemployment rate in Austin is only, is only 3% and it's leading the housing market decline. So you can't say that unemployment is the only thing that we need for prices, right? To go down. Okay. So this is going to be hard. I'm going to play a video for you guys about Austin. Okay. I want you guys to pay attention to, to what she's saying. And again, going back to the things that I hate that people say, number one, especially if it's a realtor or an investor, they don't explain their definition of crash. It's just all like, it's not crashing. Well, first, before you say it's not crashing, what's not crashing? What do you, is it, is it transactions? Because that's still crashing. Is it prices? Is it inventory? What's not crashing? We need definitions. The other thing that I absolutely hate, you guys, it's a great time to buy. It is why? Why is it every time we talk to a, a bad realtor, the good realtors will say they're honest, okay? Because please don't be mad at me, good realtors. I'm only talking about the bad ones. Why is it every single time we ask them, is it great? It, you know, should we buy right now? They always say it's a great time to buy. It's never been a better time to buy. Every single time they say that instead of saying that traditionally the best time to purchase is between December and February. Y'all hear me on that? The best time to buy usually is between December and February. How often do we hear that from realtors? How often? I hear that so, it's just so rare to hear that you guys. It's always, it's a great time to buy. And the other thing that I hate, just refinance later. Just get a house right now. Your payment will go down maybe in two years, two, $300. Just go buy a house right now. You can refinance later when they don't explain how difficult refinancing can be. How do I know that? Because I've been doing refinances for residential mortgages for over 20 years. I'm just saying you guys, but take a listen. Okay. I'm sorry with my rant. Hopefully that wasn't too long of a rant. I feel like it was too long of a rant. I don't know. I'm going to do another time stamp right here. You guys, was that too long of a rant? It was, wasn't it? But take a listen to this realtor, okay? This is not a realtor. This is a board member of the Austin Association of Realtors. So this is someone that you're about to listen to that is training other people, other realtors on how to sell real estate. So again, the people at the top are doing an absolutely clownish job. And people wonder why I call the real estate industry a circus. It's because the clowns are at the top. And instead of, again, when I'm in front of realtors, I'm like, use the data, use a market analysis, explain to people the caution, right? Don't 
toxic cheerleading because if you just keep toxic cheerleading, they're just going to take it away from you like they did to loan officers back in 2009. But listen to this video. And you guys, if you can, please let me know that the audio is good here. Okay. If you guys can do that housing for me. market crash are greatly exaggerated. That is the word the audio good, from the Austin Board of Realtors tonight. And our Fox 7 focus, I went one on one with Board President Ashley Jackson to talk about the okay? state of Austin see. real estate and the impact of the Fed's decision not to raise interest rates. So we saw this, this headline, this article from Newsweek that said Austin was one of seven cities across the country where the housing market is, quote, crashing. Do you feel like that's accurate or is, is that being a little over dramatic? I think that's a little overdramatic and it's certainly an eye-catching headline and lots of people will click on it to read it, but the Austin market is not crashing. The Austin market is stabilizing. We've had a price correction, but we remain, we remain steady and strong. And, and in fact, the Austin Board of Realtors monthly report just came out, I understand, on Wednesday. What does that reveal about where things stand right now with the housing market? Yeah, so the, the report showed that the market continues to normalize. You know, we had a crazy pay, pace of sales for this past few years. Now we're seeing a normalization of the market. It is a great time to get into the market and buy a home. There's a lot, you know, less competition out there for buyers. We also have more homes, 3.2 months of inventory for a buyer to choose from. So over the past few years, a buyer may have only had one choice in a neighborhood, just one house. Do you like that house? You better get that house. Whereas now a buyer should have four to five houses to choose from. So it's a great time to be a buyer in the Austin area. It looks like the Fed is putting up. Okay, so this is why I need to take ice plunge baths every single day. So she just said, it's a great time to buy because there's less competition. What about it's a great time to buy if you can really afford it? Consumers need to be aware that mortgage payments are $1,000 more and that it's possible that the next few years is going to be sideways as far as equity growth. Why can that be an issue if anyone is forced to move or if they want to chase their dream and move whatever reason they may have to move that's hampered, right? But again, y'all hear, I'm just going to play it. Pause on raising interest rates, at least for right now, which is, which is a change from what we've seen in the last few months, although they may decide to start raising them again, possibly as soon as next month. How is that affecting or how could that affect the housing market here in Austin? Well, we have seen that the housing market is sensitive to interest rate changes. So when we see a little bit movement, even going down or just staying the same, more buyers get active in our marketplace. Um, conversely, last fall, when we saw rates, you know, hovering around seven or higher, um, buyers pulled out of the marketplace a little bit to wait. But I'd like to caution buyers that that's really kind of a mistake at this point. It, it, you are hard pressed to find the market is stable. And it Do y'all hear what you just said? I don't know. Someone said there's a, sh a shameless, uh, and I wasn't on, I, I know I'm on here. Let me take it off so you guys can see me better. Cause I know I was on camera on the bottom left. Someone said shameless plug. I'm not sure if they're talking about this coffee cup here. Is that better? I'm not trying to plug anyone, but this was my company coffee cup. So I'm sorry if I fed anyone, but y'all hear what she just said. You're making, did y'all hear you're making a mistake, a great mistake. If you're waiting, you're making a mistake. This is a lady at the top. She's training people. People look up to her. She's an influencing her. She's an influencing her. And she's on the news saying waiting is a mistake. It's just, it's just, you guys, um, this is just so, um, she's a realtor and a board member. I believe she's both of them. A anyone could be both. It's friendly like, to buyers in Austin guys, really? as we're seeing it right now. You know, I've lived here about 40 years and I can count on this one is, hand is, the times one more time. down or just staying the same. More buyers get active in our marketplace. Um, conversely, last fall, when we saw rates, you know, hovering around seven or higher, um, buyers pulled out of the marketplace a little bit to wait. But I'd like to caution buyers that that's really kind of a mistake at this point. It See? See, she's like people pulled out to be more cautious and wait. She just said it's a mistake to pull out of the housing market and wait. And I, guys, I've been doing this 22 years and I'm, I'm saying to wait. So anyways, it is what it is, you guys. Let's just, let me just play the rest of the thing for you. It's just so shocking. It, it, you are hard pressed to find the market is stable and as friendly to buyers in Austin as we're seeing it right now. You know, I've lived here about 40 years and I can count on one hand the times that I've seen such a friendly marketplace for a buyer. So don't let the interest rate chatter scare you off. 
Okay. So it's never been the, I'm so sorry, guys. I, I really apologize. You know, I get really, <sighs> so, um, in her 20 years, okay. What she's saying in her 20 years, she's never seen a market so friendly to buyers. Well, I've been doing this for 22 years and I can tell you that I've never seen a market as unfriendly to buyers. And I'm talking like, we, we still don't even have enough inventory to like buyers beating up sellers. We can beat them up. Yes. But not like insane buying incentives, like for every property. And what about the uh, historically high unaffordability right now, matching the 1980s? And then what about the 45? I'm sorry. What about the 60% run up in values in two and a half years? Wouldn't the best time that she's seen to buy real estate when rates were at 2%, like maybe around 2020. Wouldn't that be, she's been doing this 20 years. Why is right now the best time that she's seen the market treat buyers? We have quantitative tightening. Literally the federal reserve is forcing people to the sideline right now. Buyers to the, they're forcing them to, to the sideline. And then you have this lady at the top, this head, this person in charge of influencing saying these things. It's crazy to me. I got a super chat. Brother, how are you? Love you, man. How about that humidity, right? Happy Father's Day. She's at the bottom and morally corrupt based on compensation. You are the man, Travis. That's a big money opinion, not mine. It's the money, you guys. That's why I started out showing you guys how much money is in real estate because, we, you know, I don't want people to misunderstand what I'm saying. Like I'm just rambling and venting at people. What I'm saying is, is what I truly believe with all my heart. Danny Carr. Danny, I did a, a review for you, Danny. Danny, I did a review on Artavia, my last live video. Go to my last live video. I had did a market analysis on Artavia just for you, Danny, and you weren't even online. But brother, um, I definitely appreciate you. You're out in Texas too. I can't remember. I think you said Austin. I definitely appreciate your support, brother. Do me a favor, man. You don't have to send me super chats. Go show some people some love. If you have a spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, go buy them some flowers. Don't, don't help. Don't do that to me. Okay. I appreciate you though. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Let's go back to this video. You guys. All right. Go back to this video. We're almost done with it. It's really just drives me crazy. Um, people saying this again, brother, thank you for the support. It was almost done. Where do you think the market is headed in the months and years to come? Obviously it's been kind of a, Kind of an unusual several years. Obviously, we had the pandemic, and then we had prices going up. Where do you see things going as we look ahead? I think we're going to stay on the stable pace that we're on. I do think that the higher interest rates is causing a little pent-up demand. And so if we see them ease off a little bit from where they are now, you know, as we move forward into the winter, I do expect that we'll see an increase in buyer demand. Because as you know, Austin remains a, a place for where people want to live. Employers are coming here. Lots of people are still moving to the Austin area. Um, one thing that I would love Austinites to keep in mind is that right now, if you've been in your home for a while and you want to move, you want to get closer to your job, you want to downsize, this is a really great time to do it. There's less competition out there. You've probably got deep equity in your home. This is your time to make your move. And then in a few years, you can refi and get a better interest rate. You can date the rate, but marry the house. That's kind of a saying that's been going around for the past year. And, and honestly, it makes sense. You don't want to buy when everyone else is buying. Now is the time to do it. Oh my gosh. Y'all, when I first listened to that video, I must not, I must not have listened to the whole thing because I didn't know she was going to end with that. This is June of 2023. We're still saying cringy, lying, salesy stuff like just buy the house or what? Date the rate, buy the house or what? what is, you guys, she is a board member of the Austin Real Estate. She's influencing these people. They're telling people, they're agents, okay? They're pizza doing. Most of them are pizza delivery drivers. I understand that. They're saying, date the rate without saying, do you see how she smiled? You guys, you see how she smiled and made you feel great, right? I, there's no reason from her facial expressions that we should not trust her. But unfortunately, what she lacked is explaining to people again, like I've been saying, how difficult it can be to refinance. But I understand I'm a little emotionally charged right now, perhaps because I do not like bullies at all. And I look at that as financially bullying potentially great people, but take a look at this. Okay. Let's look at some data. Let's, let's analyze real quick, Austin. And remember what she said and how optimistic she was, but let's just, we're just going to do some analyzing. I'm trying to get this away. 
for you guys here. Okay. Here's Austin. Here's median sales price. Okay. So I just wanted to point out again, this is median sales price. I get it. We just looked at Zillow home value. We can look at CoreLogic, but this is median sales price from Redfin. Austin right now is, <laughs> oh my God, that's horrible. I'm not trying to laugh. I'm sorry. If, if you've recently bought Annie, I'm not talking about you, Annie, but I warned you and you know that, and I know you're doing okay, but Austin, as far as median sales price is under 2021. So Austin has year over year over year loss. Did y'all hear me on that? So unless you purchased around February of 2021, the average person in Austin has been losing equity since February of 2021. Did y'all hear me? Y'all tracking with me, okay? The market right now is so dangerous. There are so many people saying things for financial gain and throwing caution to the wind. And the thing is, is it doesn't hurt them. Throwing caution to the wind makes them more money. Throwing caution to the wind makes them more money, but it puts you at risk. Y'all y'all starting to track with me? Please track with me. Austin's down year over year over year. You haven't made money on your house since, again, if you purchase February of 2022, y'all get it. Y'all get what I'm saying here. Okay. That's just median sales price. But what's the really important thing that we need right now? What do we need right now? Y'all we need inventory. So look at months of supply. Now, first of all, okay. For months of supply, I wrote this down. She said 3.2 months of supply. The one of the head board members for Austin said that they have 3.2 months of supply. The reality is they actually have, um, I apologize guys. Let me go back to there real quick. I thought I clicked the right one. They actually have, as you can see here. Okay. So it timed me out. That's what it did. But I'm already back in the spot here. Okay. Look at Austin actually has 4.3 months, not 3.2 months. Austin has considerably more inventory than what she just said. And not only that, look at this. So Austin's inventory has been pretty much sideways since about Cosmos. I see the super chat Cosmos. <sighs> I'm gonna bring it up in a minute. I'm gonna bring it up. I thank you, brother. I'm not gonna never appreciate you and thank you guys. But um, to a last minute, try that. Austin's inventory has been sideways since about March when quantitative easing started. So, but look at this recently. All right. And this is what I've been hoping. Okay. This, Austin's ahead. I want the national average to do this. And I'm hoping it starts, you know, like I said, uh, at the end of June is when I hope it starts start on the national average. You can see it's already happening in Austin, but there's been a sharp increase in inventory in Austin on only a week over week basis. So I, you know, we could see sharp inventory increases, but to see a sharp inventory increase on a week over week basis could imply it's over. The seasonality, the seasonality in Austin is done. Deflation is coming back. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, when we hit those fall months, like last year, like every year, it's going to get bad, but it's going to get way worse this year because we have way more factors than just seasonality. Let me uh, throw this uh, up here real quick, you guys. And um, I'll start taking some questions. If you guys have some questions, Cosmos. Oh man, you didn't even have a message, brother. Just a just a super sticker. Thank you, Cosmos. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. And I want to tell you, Cosmos, why I appreciate this, man. You know, and this goes to really everyone. Being a content creator is way harder than I thought, you guys, because I care and I think about what I'm saying. And I'm reading the comments and, and the people are saying, I've been talking about this two years. I've been wrong. I've been misleading. Like I read all of that stuff. And the way that I gauge how much I'm helping is by y'all support, not financially but just how you're talking, how you're sharing things, what your comments are. Even though I know I'm not, I, I can't possibly be right about everything. I'm doing the best I can. And it's really interesting. You guys, you could read 20, 30 good comments, but that one bad comment, if you allow it will ruin your day. So it's your love. I'm telling you guys, you know, and, and one of my mentors is like, Travis, why have you slowed down? I'm like, dude, I'm burnt out. Being burnt out is a real thing, you know? Uh, so I just wanted to say, you know, that love keeps me going, you guys. <laughs> and it's not financial love, I'm saying. I'm just like hearing you guys, seeing you in the comment section, seeing you guys talk to each other really means a lot to me. I can make so much more money right now if I just became like everyone else, you guys. I choose to make less money so that I can educate. And I've been doing this for about like three years. I've been taking a pay hit for like three years, maybe. 
maybe even more than that, just because um, it's just rewarding, man. When you get to train someone and educate someone and they're better because of that, that's way more valuable to me than, than a piece of paper with money, with a dollar sign on there. You know what I mean? I mean, dang it, dude. I see it. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right. So I got another, um, brother. I really appreciate it. Travis, our girlfriends, wives, and kids are taken care of. Your work is invaluable. Stop telling us to not to spend on super chats. You will lose on that one. Okay, brother. I, well, you know what, man? Well, I just wanted to tell you what these mean to me, okay? I don't need the money. What I'm, My point is, is I don't need the money, but the comments the comments are certainly valuable to me. They're certainly valuable, especially, and I'm not just saying like the comments were like, good job, Travis. Those do help, but I'm like, like when I actually can tell that I've helped someone, I could see some of these comments and some of the emails that I get y'all, people pouring their hearts and souls out to me. And I really feel great about it, but it also makes me sad because I realize that it's so rare. It's just so rare. Brother, thank you. And then I got my man, Danny. Danny, um, love you, brother. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. I'm working with Jennifer at the moment. What? Danny, you working with Jennifer at the moment? Danny, you, if I swear, man, if you're going to buy, hit me up. Hit me up if you're going to buy because I, before you buy, and I'm not saying let me be your realtor. I need to talk to you for 30 minutes because you're my neighbor. Hit me up on my email. I need to talk to you for 30 minutes. And I'm going to try to explain to you what I think is happening in Houston. Houston's my market. Do not buy without talking to me first. Of course, do whatever you want. Um, and then happy Father's Day. And thank you, Danny. Danny, do me a favor, brother. Let me know if you caught that video because I did that market analysis special for you. You've been with me close to the beginning. I recognize that and I wanted to do something special to you. I just didn't see you online. But let me know you went to my last live video. Go to my last live video and then go to the market analysis section, Danny. That one's for you, brother, okay? Let me know you did that. Let me know you did that. Um, Eddie, it can be. It can be a rough crowd and, 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 and that's okay. But like... The, the, the other heavy part is making sure I'm giving you guys accurate and clean information. And that's why I lost a lot of sleep with like Jeff and vital signs, not so much Johnny, although I love him. Um, I just think Johnny's, he, he's ahead of the game and he's going to be okay. Um, because I really like stay up late sometimes and I'm thinking about what I'm saying. I'm like, man, I really hope it's working for these people. And that's why I'm always saying, don't let me do the thinking for you. Remember, work on credit, income, and assets, right? Use the data to find the deal, market analysis, rent, flow, and things like that, right? But at the end of the day, you have to make up your own mind. I can't make up your own mind. You guys know that I'm just rambling now. Um, it is a, a bit, of, bit of a tough crowd. So, man, Taco, why are you messing with me like that, Taco? That is... <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. That is funny, my man. Uh, here's my life savings. God bless. If that's your life savings, Taco. <laughs> uh, I love you too, man. I love you too, man. Thank you for your support. Okay, here's another question. This is from Night Cry. I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing your name properly. Uh, and then just for currency reserve, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift this up. Okay, I work for AMCAP. Shameless plug. Let me just make... I didn't lose any subscribers. Oh my gosh. Maybe it's just the currency. guy. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? I'll try to do better. Travis, any thoughts about the realtor message I sent telling people to use high equity to get HELOCs and refinance for cash out? Yeah, brother. So he sent me some information um, about realtors pushing people to use their HELOCs. And a HELOC is a home equity line of credit. A HELOC is what people use um, to pull out money out of their house and to usually either home improvements or invest, uh, and then to refinance cash out. So, but, but you got to understand my friend, we shouldn't be surprised that they're saying that because their job is to sell you a house. Their job is to convince you that it's a good idea to sell a house. So if the business is down right now by 30%, then they want to think of ways that they can put money into your hands now that there's no stimulus printing. When the stimulus was being printed, we had money in our hands, but now that there's no money in our hands, they need money to be in your hands so they can continue to profit off of you. And that's why it's no surprise, my man. But yeah, I mean, they're gonna think of every way to try to get money out, obviously. Taco, that was funny. Still laughing about, I'm still laughing about tacos. Still, here's Danny. The taxes in Tavola are higher than Artavia. Yeah, they are. But remember, Danny, you should be doing a market analysis. Actually, I did a market analysis on both Arta. I said Artavia, Artavia. It's not Artavia. It's Artavia. 
So I did a market analysis on both Tavola and there, but the thing is, Danny, taxes matter, but also finding a property with wedge, right? Or under market value. And how do you determine market value? One good way to get an idea is you look at 2022 sold home data. So generally the value is calculated by comps or sold homes, all right? You guys, please smash the like button. Thank you, T Tucker. I appreciate you mentioning that, my man. Let's see here. I'm just trying to see if I get <clears throat> anything juicy real quick. You guys, I'm going to get um, good. Danny watched it. Uh, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I agree with you, brother. I agree with you. Okay, good. Okay, so let's. Okay, so this is Jackie. Let's just end on some good like uh, recommendations because we don't give financial advice. We can't do that, especially not personalized advice. But she's saying to always interview three realtors. And here's the thing, you guys. It is a hassle. Okay, I'm not saying it is, but it should be a hassle. This is a huge transaction. It is a hassle. But you guys, to interview a realtor is super easy. You can literally call thirty realtors in one day and just get like a pad and paper. I'm not sure if I have any notes. Just get a pad and paper and take notes, 20 realtors, and then ask them three questions. What's your definition of a market crash? Is the housing market crashing? And is it a good time to buy? Boom. And then depending on how they answer those, have them start doing your market analysis. Have your interview be the market analysis. And again, I'm telling you guys, 20, 30 realtors. It should take you two hours at most to call 20, 30 realtors. Depending on how much they ramble, you can see that realtors ramble. I ramble. Good one, Jackie. Good one. Plum Grove. Yeah, Tavola. I it's down the it's down the way for me. I don't know about Tavola. Uh, let's see here. Mm, let's see. Do 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 do. This week. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at Elijah. All my exes live in Texas. Juicy. I close on the sale. Okay. Okay, Elijah. Of my house this week. I hope the new owners enjoy the free labor and HVAC. I'm sure they will, Elijah. I hope you enjoy the profit that you're about to make. Elijah, tell us what you plan on doing next. Uh, you know, a lot of, you know, Elijah's been pretty active, especially over the last two or three months. Tell us what you're going to plan on doing. I, I think it's still a great time to sell for most people right now. And I've actually considered selling my own rental that I converted. I had to move. I didn't really have a choice. So I converted it. Um, so I was kind of forced to sell. Oh my gosh, there's more super chats. You guys, <sighs> you guys know I have trouble controlling my emotions. So please don't uh, do that. But uh, I'm going to get there. Um, Elijah, tell us what you did afterwards. Let's see what my man says here. You give people wisdom for free. Based on the hardship you went through, people forgot 2008, including my friends. If there were more people like you, you would not <laughs> have a channel. That's crazy to think about. He's probably right about that. And, and just in case you guys don't know what I went through, what, and thank you, brother. My God, man, no more, okay? No more. I'm going to end this. I mean, I'm going to end this live right now if you, if you do that again. Uh, but I really appreciate that, man. Uh, but what I went through, guys, in 2008, now a little bit about my backstory. I became a realtor. 10 days after I turned 19, it was my goal to become a realtor and a loan officer, by the way, by the age of 18, but I became a loan officer and a realtor 10 days after I turned 19, uh, flipped my first house when I was 20 before I could legally drink, made a million dollars by the age of 23. And, uh, while I was doing that, it was the absolute worst time of my life. So I was making the most money and I was absolutely the most depressed. Um, because I only cared about money. I didn't care about people. And what I had to do to, to become who I am now is I had a foreclosure that led to a deficiency notice. And, and, uh, and despite me filing insolvency led to a tax lien for over a hundred thousand dollars. It wasn't on income. It was on my foreclosure. I had a bankruptcy, uh, as well and a repo. And that's what I had, you guys. And I've rebounded since then. My credit score is, depending on uh, if it's like car, what industry is pulling my credit, my credit score is in the upper 800s. And I have no consumer debt. So I'm doing pretty good. But it was a very painful process. And then my man, Dooster. My man, Dooster. I miss you, Dooster. Miss you, brother. Um, happy Father's Day, everyone. Now let's get to the important stuff. What's for dinner and what? uh, what's your drink of choice? You strike me as a pina colada type of guy. Hold the pineapple. 
Interesting fact, Dooster, I don't like drinking. I don't know if you knew that. I'll drink some wine every once in a while. I won't even drink beer at a barbecue. The reason is, is like, I'm a grown man, dude. I'm a father. And if I start drinking, I need to take a nap in 30. Like, I have a great time for 20 minutes. I'm one of the best drunks, probably the funnest drunks. But after 20 minutes, do a stir, I got to take a nap. And then I feel bad the next day. So I really don't drink. But to answer your question, my favorite drink is my own personal homemade margaritas. I love making margaritas. I make the absolute best margarita you've ever had before. And actually, if we can ever meet up in Florida, I'll make you some margaritas, man. I'll have a margarita challenge with you. Uh, but I, I usually don't drink, man. Um, usually don't drink. <laughs> I think it's a great time to buy as many properties as you can. Is that what Dogman is saying, Johnny? Is do I don't even watch Dogman anymore, Little Dogman. What's, what's he got going on? Is he still training dogs? And I mean, what's the guy doing, man? Give us, give us a little update. Oh, 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 Kim, Kim, do I listen to RJ Talks? You guys, thank you for asking these questions. I do listen to R, uh, RJ Talks. He's got a good up and coming channel. Yeah, I have, um, I've talked to him on the phone. I was supposed to call him back and reach back out to him to do a collaboration. I just haven't done it. You guys have been really worried about like keeping my hand on the pulse of the housing market more so um, than getting RJ, but yeah, I listen to his stuff and he's very, I, I really enjoy his channel and his content. Um, very analytical, very business, very businessman, very analytical about the data. Very sharp, very sharp. Okay. Let's see what else here. You two, there's New York. You're passionate. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I, the thing taco, is uh, I wanted to start with your comment. I never came back to it, but brother, here's the thing. I don't know much about uh, Rio uh, Gr Grande Valley. It's easy for me to do broad analysis on market, but when it comes to you, sir, purchasing real estate, you gotta go hyper-local, brother. You have to go hyper-local and you gotta go so hyper-local you're doing an analysis on the subdivision. So depending on what the data says, when we compare subdivision data, brother, Th that would give me a better indication, but I could pretty, I mean, I'm going to also say this, if it's something that you love and that you can afford, and that is like a great deal, like under market value and you can cash flow, maybe, maybe it would be decent, but I just don't have faith that that that's the reality of the situation. I just don't have faith in it. I just, I just don't, oh, do stir. <laughs> love it. Yes. I'm, I did talk to Michael two days ago. Um, he's he's going to come out to Houston. M uh, Michael and I are going to do a video each. And I did get a tank top. I got my tank top and my sunglasses already. Special for him. I know. Yes. Just in case you guys don't know. Johnny's being sarcastic, everyone. Johnny's being sarcastic. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Johnny. Johnny's good. Johnny's good at what he does, y'all. Johnny is good at what he does. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Oh, I see you, Dooster. Dooster, good thing I don't live close to you. I think we'd be great neighbors. You just ha He just had to do that. He just had to do that. Um, thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should get together, throw, share each other's emails. Deuce, Deucer's a really cool dude. I know, man. But like, dude, I got four, I got four kids and like three jobs, man. It's been hard, dude. But I plan on coming out there. I, I, you know, I promise you that. You guys, I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I'm going to get back to it. My children are here. I'm going to get back to Father's Day again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys so much for the support. All of the people that I've been talking to, everyone I threw up on the screens. You got four kids too? Deucer got four kids too? Um, you guys, regardless, you guys keep me going from the bottom of the heart. Thank you. It is a bummer, though, that we are seeing the seasonality um, beat out the quantitative tightening. But what, again, to be specific, what I'm saying is, is that is going to end just like it did last year when people were basically spitting in my face. OK, it still happened last year. It's probably going to happen this year. So definitely appreciate you. Uh <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, other than that, if you're out there investing in real estate, you guys already know I wish you luck and I hope you win and have a great